Hello everybody, this is Etho and welcome back to another episode of Her Hermitcraft. Oh, it's my, I've, I've climbed this mountain like a hundred times now. It's not getting any easier. Uh-huh, yeah, so as much as I love our mountain base location, it does take a good minute to get up this hill every time I want to return to the base. It'll be quicker once we get elytra wings, but even still, <laughs> I gotta do this journey thousands of times a season. I figured let's set something up here to make it a bit easier. And we got a button now. So basically this button goes all the way from here to up the mountain somewhere over there. We ran redstone. We're all out of redstone now. <laughs> I used it all up doing this, like 200 bucks or so. Uh, but that goes up to an ender portal. So when we hit the button, the redstone goes to this trap door here, closes the trap door, and then that causes our ender pearl to land and teleport us up to the base so we don't have to make that journey anymore. So that is awesome. And then we just got to set a new one there for the next time uh, we want to trigger it. Uh-huh. So I also set up one here for Iskel as well. One of the beauties of basing together, I figured, is, uh, you know, if he's on a journey somewhere and I happen to be online at the same time and he wants to come back home, I can just flip his trap door down. And he doesn't have to walk thousands of blocks home, you know? I can just teleport him back whenever he wants. Oh, snappers. Okay, you know the really cool thing about this season is we're living with Iskel. And that, that has a couple benefits, I gotta say. <laughs> uh, it's really fun, actually. Like, every time I log on, something around the base seems to change. Like, it's, I'm living in a dynamic base this season, which is way more entertaining for me. Because um, it's like, you know, normally you log on, everything's the same and boring and... Now it's like, oh, what did Iskel do now? What did he do now? And he's he's been busy, man. Look at this. He's, he built some awesome houses there. He's got a villager just hanging out in a basket. Uh, he did a bridge. And I kept seeing the cows, and I thought they were glitched out. And then I zoomed in on them, and it's like, oh. <laughs> he made them all upside down. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great. Uh, I think Mumbo came by as well. He set up a, a potato vendor. Tater vendor. What else we got here? We got a portal set up. Let's check this out real quick. So I think the Hermits Helping Hermits, that happens every Monday. A bunch of Hermits stream together and they try help someone out or help out uh, people in general. And I think they set up a nether, like a basic nether hub to connect everyone together. They set up a portal for us. Ito and Iskel, so that was nice of them. Let's check out what Iskel left us here. Some kind of enchanted book. Uh, oh, Mending! Oh, I wonder if he got a Mending Villager. Oh, they're all mending. Okay, that's perfect. We need mending very badly. My boots are about to break. My pick is about to break. A couple of my picks are about to break. <laughs> Last episode, a lot of people commented about this sword. Apparently, I got super lucky with this roll. So we're going to call it the, the special sword. Get a mending on there. Make sure we don't lose it. Uh, but wait, there's more. Check this out. We got another thing here. A live stream weekend gift for Etho. It says to Etho from Joe Hill's stream chat. He left us a Riptide 3 book. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe's chat. That is awesome. As you guys know, we're trying to do a Trident Riptide base so we can zip around from different platforms. Iskel already got his Trident. I don't know how he did it. So he's been zipping around like from here to the bridge and stuff. So I went hunting for a Trident as well. I was determined. I was going to get a Trident no matter what. And I spent a good two, maybe three hours looking for the guys. I went like four or five thousand blocks out in the ocean to all the ocean structures to try to spawn the guys in. Did a little bit of a treasure hunting as well. You know, you gotta get those treasures and the dolphin will still be with his dolphins, Grace. And you guys know, as badly as I wanted this Trident, there was no way I was going to give up. After 20 or 30 of those guys, yeah, I gave up. It was taking too long. <laughs> From farming all those tridents, though, I did actually come up with a pretty good technique for it. Basically, I go out in the ocean at nighttime when it's dark because they spawn in the darkness. You wait till everybody's offline so that they don't steal your, your mob spawns. You do F3B, and that highlights these guys like crazy. And you just go up to them and see if they throw a trident at you. And if they don't, you just, you just move on. Look, there's a guy right there. They do swim up at you when you're in the boat because your butt's in the water apparently <laughs> uh, you know if they don't throw a trident you just move on you try to spawn more oh there's another guy there you got a trident no trident there either no dice 
Anyways, I think let's not waste too much of our time on that anymore because honestly, we need more than just one trident. We're going to need backup tridents. If we accidentally die and lose our trident, we don't want to go through that whole rigmarole to get another one, right? We should just make a trident farm and we'll try to do that maybe next episode. I think for this episode, I want to focus on the four pillars of a successful Minecraft player. Do you guys know what they are? Number one, bone meal. Number two gunpowder number three ah huh? you know what it is you know what it is villager trading uh-huh of course and finally i don't know uh no piglin uh <laughs> piglin bartering if you do those four things you're gonna have pretty much all the resources in the game so step one is the bone meal we did set up uh i, I got like the tinted glass all around here D didn't decorate the area at all we'll do that later hopefully but we do have a working Skeleton farm, so we can get lots of bone mill now and get levels for enchanting. I don't want to show you. Oh, yeah, here it is. I want to show you just the root real quick here. This is something that, you know, can kind of trick people out. How do you make them go up a, an elevator? You use a fence, it goes into a soul sand block, and then they go straight up. And we make the water flow this way. At the soul sand block, you see how I got an extra space there. That pulls them into the elevator. They go up. They get funneled over here, <laughs> and then they fall down, and they get down to a one-hit kill if they don't have armor on. Uh, I do have to be a little careful here because I don't have feather falling. So let's just uh, make sure nobody's shooting at me, and then we'll go down. Ooh! Uh oh! Uh oh! Uh oh! Okay, let's just cover that for a second. <laughs> I could not place another block. I thought I'd be able to place another one on the way down there. So yeah, nothing too fancy just yet. It's your basic skeleton farm, but we do have a way of getting bone meal, which is great because we're going to need that. Okay, so the thing is, bone meal on its own doesn't really do anything, right? We actually have to set up some farms to use the bone meal. <laughs> uh, but the problem is, is Kel and I, we're kind of poor. We don't have a lot of stuff. I used up all the redstone today, and uh, we don't have blocks or anything really. So I gotta just uh, do a bit of farming here. Uh, I was mining some redstone and stuff, and then I got the idea. You know, if I'm if I'm mining underground for redstone, why don't I just use the the time mining to hollow a slime chunk or two? <laughs> so that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> Is still flip my horse upside down. Oh man, that's great. So Ethan, I heard the jungle sapling I gave you uh, failed. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I paid, I paid good villager heads for that sapling, and I grew the tree. I was expecting a, a bountiful harvest, and nothing yeah. fell. I got no sapling back. Oh, yeah. I, I feel awful about that. It was a dud sapling. I mean, do you need some more? Were so I did find a did stash. It still apparently had a barrel hidden away with like twelve in. So. Okay, okay, good. Still some of okay, those. phew. So, jungle sapling gate concluded. Excellent. I will use the, your guilt for the bargaining here. Um, okay, good. Yes, because... Because <laughs> I would like some redstone. Yeah, you let me know you need and, some and redstone. discount price for the, the sapling. You know? Yeah. Well, we got a stack, okay? This is a stack of, of beautiful redstone. Yoink, just thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oi! Negotiations are not complete yet. Oh, Jeez. Let's start know. with one of these. You, you like those things? Ooh! That's actually, that's oh. pretty tasty, actually, oh. Oh. considering I have no armor at the moment. And Okay, all know, right, all right. I don't know how you're I'm doing on that. those. You're pr Ooh, well, we're about to get quite a lot of those from the four skeleton spawners in the chunk hole, so. Okay. Eh. That's a, that's a no-go. Uh, no-go. Yep. Uh, you know, you'd maybe, maybe one or two. Or, I don't know, I, I honestly don't know how much it's worth. How's five sound? Uh, you know what? I think that's pretty good. Totem of Undying, five well, diamonds. Well, actually, I'm, I'm good. I'm I'll good. give you two more. Two more. How about that? Oh, seven? Seven? Yeah. Can we make it eight so it's a nice round number? Just for my okay. brain? Okay. Okay, good. Well, listen, do you want to see the chunk hole? It's, uh, well, it's magnificent. Yeah. Where is that? I'm not going to be working with this stuff. So, you know, I, it's, it's going to be painful. I'm leaving that up to Doc. <laughs> did, did Doc ban you? Is like, Ren, you don't touch anything. <laughs> no, I banned myself because I don't oh, okay. want to spend the next four months inside of this hole. 
right. that's what it's going to take to get this thing functioning, you know? Awesome. Very cool. So that worked out great. We got a stack of redstone from Ren there. We worked out a deal. So him and uh, Doc are basing together this season, if you didn't know. And uh, they got a chunk there with eight mob spawners in. And they're, they're going to be doing some fancy stuff with that. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, I made a, a deal with Ren earlier in the season, like on the first day for a jungle sapling and I didn't get a sapling back when I grew the tree so I was giving him a hard time about that so yeah I did a bit more uh, mining myself as well so we got a fair bit of redstone components made here and you forget at the start of the season just how much cobble and stone you need for all the redstone stuff it it just guzzles it up like crazy so it was good we mined out that slime chunk area uh also we're, we're starting to get a pile up of uh, resources here it's not too bad right uh, now, I do have a project, like a fairly big project in mind for this episode, and we got to start converting over some copper. <laughs> you know, just gotta, you got to let it sit out, and then uh, I would like to wax it as well. So maybe we got to go shopping, see if anybody's selling the wax. I think Korean might be, or Tango. Oh, that's a trident dude. Wait a second. Wait a second. We got we to gotta go fight. This is the one. I can feel it. Oh, there's a pufferfish. Oh, man, that's a school of pufferfish attacking us. Wait a second. <laughs> they had a planned attack. I didn't. I almost got wrecked there. Okay. Really hard to control with the dolphin. Okay, this is the guy. We got a trident, yes! Is what I would like to say. <laughs> we didn't. We got nothing. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I wanted to grab a, a sea pickle as well. We might make a sea pickle farm. We got any sea pickles? There we go. Yoinkers. Nope. All right, check it out. This is pretty cool. So we got uh, B-dubs living over there. We got Corellis over there. And then Tango over here. This is where he's living. But he also set up a shop in like the upper stairs. Upper stairs, top stairs. Top floor? That's the one. <laughs> Welcome to Copper and Candles! Aha! Uh -huh. So he sells copper and he sells candles. Uh-oh. I might have been too late. Wait a second. It's gotta be in the barrels. Nope. Uh-oh. Oh, this isn't looking good. Where's the stock? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so one diamond for 32. I do kind of want to get some candles, actually. Let's go for the standard and we'll go for yellow. So what is this? It's one diamond per stack. That's, uh, you know, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. I think I'm going to need at least two stacks. Let's go for three just so I don't have to come back, though. Does he got more up here? Oh, yeah. Here's the copper. Okay. Do you have any for sale? Not yet. I think this is coming later. Okay. Well, we made it back home here and check it out. I laid out a field of copper to convert over, and it is very sporadic how it converts. Like, some of it is fully converted now, while a lot of it still hasn't even changed a single step. So, and it's been a fair bit of time, actually. I was surprised how long it's taken here. There he is. I saw him. <laughs> it's like, where did he go? You're not going to get me. Not again. Uh, okay. So, I saw something pretty awesome here as well. Check it out. Feather falling for... Now, is it just me or is it way harder to get feather falling for than it used to be? Like, I remember almost every enchantment before used to be feather falling on the book. And now I can barely ever get it. Like, I'm talking four or five updates ago. Oh, Unbreaking is a good one. Okay. And... Oh, I want that for my sword. Okay, that's my next one. <laughs> uh, we do have, like, armor and stuff. A little bit of it here. Uh, I'm going to leave that for Iskiel if he wants it. I'm kind of digging the, the chain look, honestly. I'm liking this, right? I'm pulling a B-dubs. B-dubs used to always wear chain armor. So that you could see his uh, skin. Because he was he was proud of the skins he, he made. <laughs> he wanted people to be able to see him, you know? But he, he's moved on from that. No, he, he just goes no armor now, just so you can get a bit, better view of him. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it looks like we got a bit of time to kill here. I'm still waiting on that copper to convert. So let's do a couple mini farm projects while we wait, I think, is a good plan. So one of my plans for the season, early on here, I want to get a bunch of like really simple, really easy to build farms made. I think it's going to be a very effective use of our time. Uh, last season, something happened. I <laughs> I built that floating base, right? And I loved that floating base so much. It was such a nice base. But the big problem it had is it didn't have any terrain. So if I ever wanted to add a farm 
onto my build, I had to do so much building just to squeeze one more thing into my base. So I en ended up never making like a potion lab, never really had a nether wart farm, whole bunch of farms, cactus farm, pumpkin farm, melon farm. There's a bunch of stuff I never got around to doing and I wanted to, right? So this season, one of my goals early on here is to get just a bunch of simple farms built. If we want something bigger later, we can get something bigger later. Um, and, you know, let's try to be a little bit more productive and stuff, right? Because the really crazy thing about it, most of these farms can literally be built in seconds. Like, <laughs> it's almost foolish not to build one, right? It's so productive. It's so useful. As long as you got a source of bone meal or gunpowder or something, uh, there's a lot of farms you should probably just build. And I couldn't do it last season. It was really frustrating because I didn't have uh, somewhere to put it. Now, the downside of doing this early is I'm not going to be able to decorate stuff till later. So this is going to look nasty. A lot of the stuff I build is going to look nasty. <laughs> uh, but I kind of just want it up and running so I can start farming things, you know. So I got a little bit of bone meal loaded in here. This is a, a wheat farm, a carrot farm, it's a beetroot farm, a potato farm, all in one. Yep, yep. So now we can make hay bales easily, target blocks, and, you know, it just gives us something to do while we're down here. We got the bones right next to it. Fills up the other side of the room, so it, it looks a little bit more balanced. Uh, at least when it, the room's done. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's get out of here. So the copper wasn't quite ready. I did another project up here. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. Uh, another thing I find pretty useful at the start of the season, especially like before we got a, a tree farm set up, uh, I really like to use bamboo a lot. I've been like chopping those down constantly. And I just wanted to get the bamboozler up. So I got my, my uh, bamboozler here. You hit the button. Let's see if it works. There we go. <laughs> How cool is that? It didn't take that long to build. It does need more decorating and stuff. Uh, I'll try to do that sometime soon. But the, the big thing about bamboo is you can convert it into sticks. And then, like, if you're crafting uh, scaffolding, uh, I, uh, item frames or paintings or tripwires, you know, there's a bunch of things that use sticks. Ladders. And it's nice to have way of getting them quickly so it's just uh, I've shown this before I think a few times now <laughs> but it's basically six dispensers full of bone meal pointing at the bamboo and it grows really quickly and then the pistons break the bamboo and it goes up a water stream and lands on your head uh oh I just looked at the episode time and uh it it's ticking right we gotta get to this so I we haven't started the main project for today just yet I don't think it's gonna take all that long to do I'm gonna have to do a bit of terraforming here though um but yeah, I, I've had this dumb idea for a project for a long time. I really wanted to do it, but it's like, it, it wouldn't really work in my single player world because I got something similar to it. So I kind of want to do it on Hermitcraft here. And I, I just never got around to it last season. So this season, this is perfect. Because another thing I want to do this season is I want to focus a bit more on like just having fun, right? Trying to do fun builds, trying to hang out with people more. That's one of the reasons why we're basing with Iskiel. I kind of got into a bad habit last season. It's like, let's go from big project to big project. And it kind of never stopped, right? It's like, it's constantly building big projects, not really stopping to, to smell the roses and have fun. <laughs> and I want to do that a bit more this season. And if I got a dumb, wacky idea for a build, I'm going to do it. And you guys can laugh at me for it. Uh, so we're building something a little bit similar to Wilson. It's not exactly Wilson. It's going to be way less complex as well. Um, in fact, uh, I think it'll be pretty straightforward. Um, what we got to do, though, is get a 7x7 wall of copper here. That's going to be... Well, we're not going to call him Wilson. We got to come up with another name. I almost said Wilson there. <laughs> uh, we got to think of another name for this guy. But uh, we're, we got to build this face. Okay. So, let me get this going. And I think I want... Something like this. Jungle wood all around. And I, again, uh, this season, I, I kind of want to bring you guys along with me on the ride a bit more. Last season, I built a lot of stuff off camera. And I want to get back into building with you guys a bit more again. Because I think that's that's fun. Not too much, right? I got to keep the episodes moving. Keep them entertaining. Okay. Now, this isn't great because we got the hill in the way. I'm going to have to do some terraforming, like I said. But just imagine. Just imagine. Right here. You know, we get, we get one of these. We got a smiley face, right? And then we go up, and we're going to have a couple eyes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'm short one. Oh, dear. 
You get the idea, right? Okay, I'm gonna do a bit off camera here though, just to keep things moving. You know what? I think maybe next episode, let's try to get a beacon. You know, I, I think a beacon's a good idea because <laughs> this is this is brutal mining. It's so slow. Okay, so now we come to the fun part of the video, the tricky part of it, where I show you guys this and you're like, okay, Ito, you got some explaining to do. What is going on here? What are you doing? What are you planning? <laughs> what is the point of all this? And uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. First, we got to take care of our friend here. You know, proper skin care is very important, guys. Can we, uh, we right click it? There it is. Wax on. Very nice. Very nice. Oh. Oh, you can just hear it getting slathered on there too. That's that's wonderful. <laughs> so I don't want the copper blocks to change on his face. Maybe on the on his hair or the roof. Part of it would be good. Some of those might look better if they're a bit blue and, and mixed in with it. So I'll leave that for a sec. Um, what we actually got to do is remove his face for a second and like just wax the whole thing. Good stuff. We got them all waxed up here and pimple free. <laughs> I guess he can't re-wax a block that's already been waxed, which is good, because I was worried I was going to, like, waste a bunch of it here. You can't. I like that. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to build the basic Wilson face, okay? The idea I have for this is, uh, I was thinking, I bet you it would be really cool if you hooked up Wilson's face to a bunch of randomizers and just like like different parts of the face to different things like the eyes to a randomizer the left side of his his smile to a randomizer the right side and kind of just split it all up and then have them all firing at the same time and see what kind of funny faces he makes <laughs> so that's like the the whole pl plan with this so this is his mouth over here you just need 10 sticky pistons and then we need uh just a couple for the eyes so what we got to do then is get two more pistons for each eye over there and then I guess these need to come out at the at the top part of the eye because we're not gonna have pistons to extend them out right so that'll come out here okay so I think we got the front part all done and taken care of so now we got to head to the back and uh, get the pistons all wired up and kind of fumbling my way through that right now <laughs> so I think the way we're gonna break it up is uh, we want the left and the right side paired together and then these two paired together and then the middle. So that'll be three different things we control. Because when you think about it, like most, it, like a smiley face, the left and the right side of the mouth are raised up. Then these three are lowered down. These two are, are always in sync with each other. Same with a frowny face, they'll be in sync. The only th facial expression that doesn't follow that rule is a grin. <laughs> like where the right side of the face might be higher than the left side, but I don't know if I'm... I'm going to try incorporate that. We'll see. Uh, I just want to try to get a, a working model first. Oh, snappers. I think we got it all good to go here. Let's flip the lever. Get it running. And uh, let's go check her out. So this is not like Wilson where we have a bunch of stuff to compute and a bunch of complex wiring. This is just let's make some funny faces, right? We just got to randomize the pistons. Uh, let's see what's happening here. <laughs> what's going on? Oh, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure what we're going to get just yet. We might have to do some tweaking. So that's a good one. That's a, that's a sad face with big eyes. Actually, wait. Let's go speed this up a bit more. Because otherwise we might be here forever. <laughs> I don't know how many faces. I guess we got four randomizers. Uh, what is that? 16 different phases? Faces? Four times four? Is that how it works? I don't know. Let's like really speed it up. Take a bunch of items out. So depending on how many items are in the hopper clock, we'll refresh faster or slower. And should be going pretty, pretty often now. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> We're getting all kinds of weird stuff here. Oh, and sometimes it'll do the exact same face as well. That is a possibility. Oh, that's a... That one doesn't really work, does it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> You know, we might have a few of those. Oh, we got a nice good smiley face there. That's fine. Let's check for creepers. I didn't do that. I think we're okay. We got a lot of dark spots. Okay, now we got the squinty eye smiley face. That's a good one. That's like super happy. Whoa. That's like a mumbo face. <laughs> it's got a mustache. <laughs> Wait a second. That was a good one. I like that one. Uh, what else we got here? We got the W. Do we have the op opposite of that? The zigzaggy upside down? Oh, another broken one. 
Okay, what do we do about the broken ones? Do we leave them in or we take them out? Oh, we got uh, a mad mumbo. <laughs> oh, we do have it. It is in there. Okay, I think that's about it. I'm pretty happy with this, though. I think that's awesome. <laughs> so I'll just uh, run you to the back here and give you a general idea of what's going on. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the other part of what I want to do with this as well, which we won't get to today, though. So this is the hopper clock that controls how often it refreshes based on how many items are in there. More items means it's slower. Uh, at first here, I'm going to keep it fast just so like when Iskel sees it, he'll, he'll see it changing. <laughs> but then I'll probably slow it down to that like every minute or two. It'll update. Uh, we run the hopper clock to... A bunch of randomizers so these have items in that shoot into a hopper and if it's a if it's the shears that go into the hopper then this redstone signal can reach all the way to where that repeater is and then it goes up to control part of the mouth or the eyes uh, for each of these randomizers there's four in total like this one up here controls the eyes it goes up over here Oh no, this one over here is for the eyes. Over here. <laughs> uh, and we can also control how often we want different things to update based on how many different items are in here. So if we want something like the eyes to trigger less often, we can throw more items in the randomizer. And uh, yeah, we got, we got pretty big control with it, which is awesome. So the other part of this that you might have noticed is we have a bunch of glowstone lamps on both sides there. So I'm thinking... We might use this as like a, a bone meal drop-off station. So we'll put the bone meal in the chest to feed them. And then as it goes into them, it will light up the lights on the left there. It's going to fill up a shulker box. And once the shulker box gets totally full, the lights will be at the top. It'll break that shulker box, put it into another chest, which will make this side increase based on how many shulker boxes full of bone meal are in, in a chest over here. And that way we will be able to visually see how much bone meal we have. And then when we want to get bone meal, we'll have a maybe a bubble column go going up here and it'll, it'll give it to us when we press some buttons or whatever. That's kind of the general plan. Anyways, we're pretty much out of time for this episode, so this is where we're going to have to end it. If you have ideas for what we should name this guy, let me know in the comments. Currently, I'm thinking maybe Copperson? Maybe something to do with bone meal? I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you guys decide uh, and also thank you very much for all the feedback on the first episode you guys were so supportive so so happy about the new season I really appreciate that uh, made me feel good and uh, you know always if you have ideas for the base here I, I, I enjoy reading that kind of stuff too uh, anyways hope you're uh, keeping cool in the heat wave here I gotta say this was the hardest episode I've had to record <laughs> I am dying. I'm sweating so bad in my super hot uh, computer room here. Uh, I'm going to go cool off. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay hydrated. Bye-bye. Yes, we got out the evoker. <laughs> got him.